But then as you look at verse 5, 8 and 11, he says, Hope in God. My hope is in God. And so hope comes, comes to his heart as he reflects on God's promise that God is going to deliver him from this depression. God is going to release him. Joy and peace will be restored to him. And the thing about this psalm is with depression, people who struggle with depression, it's up and down, up and down. One minute they're down, like the man in the psalm, why are you down, cast all my soul? Why are you downcast? But then he's up because he hopes in God. And this psalm is put here, it's been put here by God because God understands depression. Depression forces us to ask questions like this, where are you God, why am I down? But hope in God sets us free. And depression is now the common cause of mental disorders. That's what it's being classed by medical professionals. And the old term used to be called melancholy. Um, and it is um, a common, a common battle for many people, for Christians as well. Do you add anything, Jay? No, keep going, mate. You're doing well. So Psalm 40, 1, 3. Again, this is another one. Someone crying out to God. He's saying, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of a miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and trust in the Lord. He also says, I am weary with my mourning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with weeping. Psalm 6.6. 6. Psalm 56.8. You have kept account of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Indeed they are. So what we're saying is depression is real in people. In the Bible, experienced depression. They experienced depression from time to time. But the difference was, they didn't let it dominate their lives because the question comes down to this, who is your Lord? Yeah. Is your Lord God? Or is your Lord depression? Yeah. Who, what is the stronghold of your life, God? Or depression and the answer is it's God God is our Lord God is our stronghold and there's been um, there's many causes of depression like from a medical point of view there's the ge genetic biological causes which is nature or, or genetics you know it's passed through families through generations you hear people uh, that say, oh, my great-granddad struggled with depression, or my dad had depression. Yeah. So there's biological causes. the psychological or cognitive causes, which is caused by how you've been nurtured or the environment you've been grown up in. Yeah. Um, environment plays a massive part on, on depression. And there's been six classes of depression, six classes. Number one is neurotic depression, yeah. which is manifests itself in high levels of anxiety because of loss or trauma. Number two, the psychotic depression, which is intense despair. Three, there's primary depression, which occurs by itself. Doesn't seem that you can't figure out where it's come from. Yeah. There's secondary depression, which is usually side effects to medication or a poor diet. Diet is important. Yeah. You need the right things. Five, unipolar. And six, bipolar, which is um, the big one today. And the signs of depression really are sadness, lack of energy, yeah. lack of interest, 
low self-esteem, lack of sleep, loss of appetite, suicidal thoughts. And some of the causes can be sickness. When you, when you struggle with an illness for a lot of years, yeah. you know, it can depress you. Another massive one's debt. People are in debt. They, they don't see any way out, so it depresses them. Yeah. Unhealed trauma or abuse, being abused growing up. Yeah. Uh, emotions that are not healed properly. Yeah. Unhealed grief. You know, when, when you lose someone who's close to you, people might not grieve till three years later, yeah. five years later. Yeah. Uh, lack of intimate relationships. Yeah. People who feel isolated, suffer with depression. A lack of vision for life. You feel you've got no purpose for life. What am I doing here? What, 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 what's life about? Yeah. And also str uh, stress, being overworked. Yeah. And the thing is, if you, you can go to um, a secular therapist and psychologist, and they can give you good advice. They can, they'll tell you there's, there's support groups you can go to. If you're in, if you're in church, if you're a Christian, it's church. You can talk to somebody. You can learn coping techniques. There's medication, as we mentioned. There's healthy diet. There's plenty of exercise. Doctors will tell you to go for a walk. Yeah. You know, take up some exercise. Another one is, is a routine to life. But the thing is about this is all psychologists can offer you is medication and, and coping strategies. Yeah. You know, but the Lord, I believe, offers us hope to overcome yeah. depression. And so there's four things that we're going to pull out from the psalm of we said that can help us as Christians. This is basically a Christian teaching and it's for Christians that struggle with depression. So just to recap, we've been saying that this psalm describes a man in exile who is suffering from intense despair, intense depression. He's asking, where are you, God? He's asking why he's depressed. Yeah. But then he hopes in God he hopes in God and he knows and expects by faith that God is going to release him from this pit of darkness. Yeah. God is going to come in by his spirit and release him and empower him and that's the promise. And number one is, we've got to remember as Christians, this is the key to overcoming depression. Number one is this, remember joy lives in you. Now if you're not a Christian, you don't have joy living in you because joy is a manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You can experience joy on, 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 you know, by music or food or sex or dance or whatever. You can experience moments of joy. But that is a far cry from joy being actually part of who you are because Jesus is joy. Yeah. And Jesus said this in John 17, 13, But now I come to you, and these words I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. Yeah. Jesus says the words he spoke in the world was so, those that believe in him would have his joy fulfilled in them. You hear people talk about People who have depression and they may say, oh, he's, he's bipolar, he's a manic depressive. Yeah. And what that is, is defining somebody, it's putting a label on someone. Yeah, yeah. And for a Christian, for the Christian depressed or a manic depressive is not who we are. Rather, it's something we are experiencing. Yeah. As Christians, we are not a depressed person. We are a joyful person experiencing depression. Yeah. And that's something different. God does not want us to define ourselves as a depressed person because that is about our identity. The minute you start saying I'm bipolar, you're putting yourself, giving yourself an identity as a person. Yeah. No, we're not. We are not depressed people. We are joyful people. That is the core of who we are. Joyful people. That sometimes from time to time, 
mm. because of chemical imbalances or environment or the stresses of life, experience depression. Mm. But depression is not our Lord. Mm. Depression is not our Lord. Jesus is. Joy lives in us. If you're born again, if you are born again and alive to God and a child of God, mm. then Satan cannot use depression to control you or rule you. And because we have joy living inside us, it's important that we need to we need to activate this joy. In other words, we have a seed of joy in us and the the way that seed grows, that joy grows and increases and overtakes the depression, mm. is we need to water that seed. Mm. And we water that seed of joy with the word of God meditating on scriptures that tell us we're loved by God. Mm. We water the sea by praising God, worshipping God, thanking God, praising God. We water that seed by fellowship with other Christians. Mm. So we need to water that seed. Dr. Lloyd-Jones said this, I would say that a Christian no matter how dark the season of his sadness, never is completely without joy in God. There remains in his heart the seed of joy. Mm. It's like a man who sits in a prison and pulls out a tattered picture of his wife mm. or a paralyzed victim of a car accident who watches a video of the day he could dance. Inside that sadness is the seed of what we once knew of joy. In other words, the seed of joy is eternal. Mm. And you know, God commands us to rejoice. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, he says, rejoice always. That is a command. In regard to giving, he says, God loves the cheerful giver. 2 mm. Corinthians 9, 7. Mm. It says, save the Lord with gladness, Psalm 100, verse 2. It says, in, re in regard to the duty of mercy, do it with cheerfulness, Romans 12, 8. Mm. And in regard to the duty of afflictions, when you when you when you're struggling with affliction, it says count it all joy. We are commanded by God mm. to rejoice. We're commanded by God to serve Him with cheerfulness. Now this is not God being harsh because you no, know, God is right. Yeah. God's yeah. word is right. God's word is right. And God doesn't tell us to do something that we can't do because God knows he's put the seed of joy in us. Mm. You know, whether we f feel like that is irrelevant, feelings are, are irrelevant, mm. they're neutral. It's an act of faith and believing the word of God. Mm. Another way as Christians water this seed of joy is sharing the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. Getting out there and sharing the good news keeps us full of joy. Yeah. Romans 15 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's a question, what are you overflowing with? Are you overflowing with depression or with hope? Nowhere in the Bible does it say God wants people overflowing with depression. Overflowing signifies domination. It signifies a stronghold. Mm. It signifies um, being trapped, being stuck, being chained. Mm. God is not the one who's chained us. God is the one who has released us. Satan is the one who chains us. Mm. It says the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, man is not our strength. Mm. You know, antidepressants are not our strength. They can help, but they're not our strength. Food is not our strength. Hobbies are not our strength. Drugs are not our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In fact, it says in the Bible, cursed is the man who trusts in flesh and makes man his strength. Mm. The minute you trust in man, you bring yourself under the curse and Satan will get in. So how do we overcome 
how do we overcome depression? We remember that joy lives within us. That's the first key. Do you want to add anything, Jay? Um, I think if you read the book of Romans, it's all about faith in Christ. Romans 5, by one man's disobedience, many became unrighteous, but by one man's obedience, obedience many became righteous in Romans 5. And then in Romans 6, 7 and 8, it's all about trusting in Christ. And in Christ, he changes you. In Christ, he gives you peace. In Christ, he gives you joy. So you write about, it's all about our identities in Christ, not in our depression. You know, and, and it's from being our, that identity in Christ, that's where the joy can flow for the Holy Spirit to flow through us. So I, I, I agree with you there, mate. Yeah. So number two, how do we overcome depression? We need to remember this truth. God loves you and desires you to live guilt-free. That is awesome. God loves you and desires you to live guilt-free. Ephesians 1.4 confirms this truth. It says, for he chose us in him, in Christ, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. Notice, holy and blameless, which means guilt, free. And most people who suffer with depression, they feel guilty for feeling depressed. And what that does, when you start feeling guilty, it makes the depression worse. So we've got to remember that God loves us. We know we're justified by faith. We're justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have had our access by faith. So we are justified by faith. Faith, God accepts us, not because anything we do, but because we have faith in Christ. Do you want to add anything to the justification by faith, Jay? Yeah, uh, the word justification means declared right before God uh, on account of what Christ has done. So we, we can't get saved by what we do, it's what Christ has done for us. And he, t he was punished for us, he, he, he loved us. And gave himself for us on the cross. So the moment we believe in Christ, that moment we put our faith in him, we are justified, declare right before God on account of Christ's death and his life. So our confidence, as Mark saying, is not in ourselves. It's, it's looking in Christ and trusting in him. And that's justification by faith. And so faith, is, this faith isn't the one that saves us. Faith is the instrument that receives the salvation in Christ. Faith is just the receiver, but Christ is the one that saves us. So justification by faith means declared right before God on account of what Christ has done by putting our faith in Jesus. It's like sitting on a chair. Um, if you sit on a chair, it holds you. And that's all that justification by faith is. We, we sit on Christ and what he's done at the cross. And it's that sitting on Christ in our hearts that holds us where we find forgiveness and peace and joy in that justification. Yeah. Great. So point three, how do we overcome depression? We, we, we remember that our victory is close and we have to have an inner self-image of victory. You know, we've got to see ourselves overcoming with the eye of faith. We've got to see things getting better with an eye of faith. You've got to expect to overcome in faith. And if you can't see that, if you can't see yourself enjoying life or things changing for the better, if you really don't have faith for that, yeah. then you can have faith seeing yourself facing fear and problems with a new strength and confidence. Yeah. Either way, there's hope there. And this is a little quote about um, 
talking to yourself. And sometimes depression gets stronger by thoughts in the mind mm. that we constantly replay and when we talk to ourselves about how depressed we are. This was a quote and I can't remember where it's from, but it goes like this. Have you realised that most of your unhappiness in life is due to the fact that you are listening to yourself instead of talking to yourself? Mm. Take those negative thoughts that come to you the moment you wake up in the morning. You have not originated them, but they are talking to you. They bring back the problems of yesterday. Somebody is talking. Who is talking to you? Yourself is talking to you. Now, this man's treatment in Psalm 42, the psalm that we read, was this. Instead of allowing this self to talk to him, he starts talking to himself. Oh. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, he asks. His soul has been depressing him, crushing, crushing him. So he stands up and says, self, listen for a moment. I will speak to you. Hope in God for I shall yet praise him. Oh. So basically, he's, he's talking to himself in fear. When he's saying, why are you downcast all my soul? He's talking to himself in fear. Yeah. But then he shifts and starts talking to himself in faith, because he keeps saying, listen to me, soul, and I will speak to you. I am hoping in God. So the psalmist is not being moved by how he feels, but by what he believes. How he feels is terrible. Oh. He feels terrible. Why are you downcast? But then he starts to speak about what he believes. He believes that God is going to rescue him, that hope is going to come. Oh. Faith is in his mouth. And you cannot fight thoughts with just thoughts because they're on the same level. Oh. You sometimes have to stand up and speak out, speak out, speak to those negative thoughts inside your mind. Mm. Faith is released by words, mm. by words we speak. So when we hear, when we hear things or words like you're no good, we speak to that and you say, I am good because, not because I'm righteous in myself, but Christ is my righteousness. Mm. When the depression tells us, Nobody loves you. You're not important. Mm. You speak to that and say, no, God loves me. I'm a child of God. And my life is in his hands. Mm. You have to speak out vocally. So feelings are neither good nor bad. They're just neutral, but it's how, how we respond to them mm. is key. And um, we've got to expect problems to come our way. Life is never going to be free of problems because mm. that's unrealistic. But there's no problem that we can't overcome mm. when we have faith in God. Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Mm. And because Christ has overcome, we can overcome with him as well. Victory is close. You know, we should never wake up and, and think to ourselves, I don't want another battle today. Please, not another battle. Mm. Because the reality is there's going to be a battle every day because there's a war. Mm. What we need to be saying to ourselves is, the battle's on today. I'm going to be attacked today, probably. Mm. You know, there's something going to come against me today because we're in a war. But, God, I'm ready for battle. I'm prepared for battle. And uh, we've got to remember that there's a difference between a battle and a war. The war has been won by Christ. Mm. The ultimate war has been won. Mm. But, you know, we might lose some battles, but it doesn't mean we're going to lose the war. Mm. Because victory is being assured when we keep faith in Christ. Mm. So the battle is reminding Satan that he's been defeated. And it mm. takes effort. And um, we need to fight to keep our joy. We need to fight to keep that depression from becoming a stronghold. Mm. 
and we fight by speaking the word of God. And I just want to share in Second Corinthians, the Apostle Paul struggled with depression from time to time, mm. and some of the things that he went through. In Second Corinthians, chapter four, mm. eight, nine. And he's describing his ministry and he says, We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. Do you see that? He says, Yeah, yeah. We're hard pressed on every side. That, that's, that's the reality. But then faith speaks, but yet not crushed. That's his faith. Yeah. Um, we are perplexed. That's the reality of life yeah. in depression. Perplexed. We are de perplexed, but not in despair. Yeah. That's his faith speaking. Yeah. Persecuted, that's the reality, but not forsaken. That's his faith speaking. Yeah. Always carrying, struck down, that's the reality. Depression struck down. Struck down, but not destroyed. That's his faith speaking. Yeah. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. In verses 17 to 18, he says this. Now, Paul had been through some extreme pressures. Mm. He'd been whipped. He'd been shipwrecked. He'd been persecuted. He'd been stoned. And this was his this is was his attitude basically. He says, therefore, this is verse sixteen of chapter four of Second Corinthians. Therefore we do not lose heart. That's key. We do not lose heart. The devil wants us to lose heart, wants us to give into the depression. Yeah. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed every day. For our light affliction, listen to this, he's been whipped, he's been stoned, he's, he's nearly been killed, and he calls it a light affliction. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. He's talking about, about the importance of overcoming depression is have an eternal vision, seeing the bigger picture. Um, a vision for life is important mm. as well. But know your victory is close. Have that in an image of victory. Mm. And the last one is hope in God. You know, God can take our pain and turn it into pearls, bring something good out of it. Romans 8.28 says, We know all things work together mm. for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. It comes down to this. Do we believe that all things work together for good? Yeah. If we love God, we need to remind ourselves of that. When we're going through that depression, we need to say, God, I thank you, Lord, that in all things, we know all things work together for good to those who love you, God. Mm. And, you know, when we're depressed, we can analyse our pain. You know, we say, why, have I, why am I depressed? Was it, was it something in my childhood? Was it this? Was it something in the past? You know, we go analysing, yeah. you know, looking into ourselves and trying to figure out where the pain's come from. Yeah. The reality is it's not where it came from, it's where it's going to. And everything's getting absorbed into Christ. Yeah. Everything is coming to Christ. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that old advert, you know, the future is orange? Yeah. And the, the future is Jesus. That's the future. The yeah. future is Jesus. Amen. It's all going to Jesus. Um... I've got a quote here. Is it possible that God's ways baffle us because he is determined to give us more and better than we ask for? 
We know what we want. Explanations and escape from life's pain. Mm. He knows what we need to find him in the midst of everything. We want to be given reasons and relief. He works to give us his grace and glory. Mm. You know, it's knowing that wherever you're going through, God is with you every minute, yeah, yeah. every second. We have to be happy in God's will. Mm. You know, some depression is linked to unfinished business. Mm. You know, it's regret from the past. Yeah, yeah. There's un there's unresolved conflicts, un unresolved relationships. You know, we think we're not where we should be. Something's gone wrong. Mm. But you know, God can redeem that as well. Mm. God can restore what the enemy has stolen. And the ultimate promise is Revelation 21. This is the vision that we must always keep before us. Yeah. Verses 1, 1 to 4. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Here it is. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. No, there'll be no more depression. You can put anything in that list. Yeah, yeah. No more pain, no more depression. So that is the ultimate hope. And I just want to quickly, be five minutes, and that's it. And just look at that Psalm again, 42. Yeah. Again, this, he's thinking of days gone by, he's in exile. <clears throat> As the deer pants for the water brook, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. This is his doubt. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? Mm. When I remember these things, I pour up my soul within me, for I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? You know, that is doubt. He's doubting there. Yeah. His depression causes him to doubt. But then, at the end of verse 5, faith arises in his heart. Hope in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Mm. That is faith arising in his heart. He's hoping in God. God is going to help him. Mm. God is going to rescue him. But then he gives in again in verse 6 to 7 to doubt because the depression comes down on him. Oh my God, my soul is cast out within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon. From the hill, my Zah, deep unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Mm. He's in despair. He's crushed. Mm. He's crushed with his doubt. He feels like he's drowned in. Mm. He's cast down. But then again, verse 8, his faith begins to rise. And he says this, he speaks in faith. The Lord will command, the Lord will, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. So I will experience God's love in the daytime, he's saying. That's why faith is in his heart. Yeah, yeah. And in the night, his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life, he's saying. In the daytime, God's love is with me. And at night, yeah. the Holy Spirit will cause me to praise him. Yeah. And then again, verse 9 to 10, he goes back in and I doubt again. This is depression for you. It's up and down. Mm. I will say to my God, my rock, 
why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Mm. As with a breaking of my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, where is your God? He's been mocked. The mm. doubts come upon him again. Mm. His enemies are overpowering him. He feels forgotten. He's oppressed. Mm. Feels ill in himself. He's being mocked by his family, by his friends. What, what good is being a Christian? Ah, you're a Christian, you're no better off than us. You've got no more money, you have the same problems. Well, how is God going to help you? You know, if God was really helping you, he'd be paying the bills. He'd be doing this, he'd be doing that. Doubt comes on him. Mm. But then again, in verse 11, he finishes on faith. He speaks his faith. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieting within me? And then he says, hope in God. That is the key. Hope in God, mm. for I shall yet praise him. I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance and my God. Mm. Faith. So we're saying it's a, it's a psalm about depression. Mm. It's a psalm where he experiences doubt. He speaks to himself words of doubt, words of fear, words of despair. Mm. But then hope rises in him and he speaks faith. He, sp he talks about hoping in God. His hope is in God because he knows God's love is with him in the day. Mm. The Holy Spirit is with him in the night. And he will yet praise him because he knows God is his help. God is his, is his stronghold. Mm. So how do we overcome depression? We remember that joy lives in us. We know God loves us and desires us to live guilt-free. Yeah. Thirdly, we, we know our victory is close. It's coming. And, and four, we hope in God. Yeah. And God wants us to overflow in that hope. Do you want to add anything, Jay? Um, I, I, I think that was brilliant, Mark. I really enjoyed that. It was a real blessing to me. Um, I think a couple of things. I think sometimes in depression, um, in the brain, um, I, I don't, I don't know the full psychology or biology, but the the brain can uses up. There's a there's a chemical that the brain makes so that you can deal with stress. But if you get too stressed, the chemicals um, they, they stop making it. The brain stops making it. You can, it's the way of the body telling you to shut down that you can't mm. take anymore. And I think that we have to be aware that, you know, the body is a delicate thing and it can get damaged. And that there is need for the doctor sometimes or for support and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But uh, So I think that's... That's important, but I think uh, what I like, what, what I found helpful in this is it's, it's theological. That it's about reflecting upon who we are in God, and the, the and the theological resources that we have in God, and um, very often um, it gets overlooked today because the church goes the opposite direction. Yeah, uh, it, it 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 gets bogged down with trying to ape the world in psychology and all the rest of it and forgets the theology yet the theology is at the is the foundation is mm. the heart of it um, so it's those, so those are two just two thoughts I just I just think uh, that people can get damaged for whatever reason and and they do need support and they need uh, they might need medical help but at the same time, if they're a believer, um, the, you know the things that you were saying are there for them if if, if they turn to God. Yeah. Um, I, I think um, also like um, for the church, um, when people are depressed, we are a body. And we need to look out for each other. Uh, and people do get depressed. And I think it's dangerous if people...
people say to someone who's depressed, or just snap out of it. Uh, yeah. Or you're sinning against God uh, if you're depressed. I think a more caring way is to just be there for people and bring these kind of things that you've been saying to the person's attention to help them and pray with them and comfort them. So I think, yeah. you know, there's a, a community aspect that the church has to support people and that you yeah. as an individual, if you're a Christian, not to, it, it's very easy to retreat in your own depression at home and to keep it to yourself. But it's important to share it with your brothers and sisters and they can support you in prayer and, and encourage you. Uh, and also, like, you know, to go to your pastor and to talk to your local pastor or uh, they can help you, they can like, sit with you and encourage you and counsel you and stuff. Um, and then there are practical things, make sure you have the right diet because like you said, a, a wrong diet can cause it. Um, make sure that, um, you know, if you've been through, if, you, if you're overworking, make sure you get rest. So there are practical yeah. things that you can do. And if you've got, if you're born with a psychological dysfunction, you know, like if you're from a family that are naturally depressive, yeah. uh, to know yourself. Lloyd Jones used to talk about know yourself. You know, it, get to know your body, know, know know what you like, you know, know the cycles that you go through, and 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 then counteract it with with the kind of things that you're saying, the biblical truths. Uh, mm. So those are just some thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Shall I close in prayer, then, Jay? Yeah. Okay, mate. Okay. Lord, thank you that you know the emotions that we go through, Father, and the emotions that we experience, Lord. Thank you, God, that you do not judge us, Lord, for what we go through, Lord, or how we are. But, Lord, your love is with us, God, when, when we repent of sin and, and turn to the Lord Jesus, Father. You do not hold our sin against us. You do not judge us, Lord. But, Father, you fill us with your joy and your Holy Spirit. Mm. And God, I, I just pray for anyone who feels burdened with depression, Lord. There must be people who feel burdened with depression, Lord. And they want to know, is there going to be any hope? And the answer is yes. The hope is through a relationship with Jesus, knowing Jesus. Yeah. And having the joy of sins forgiven, being born again. And I pray, Lord, that this message will lead people into a relationship with Christ, that they would know the joy of sins forgiven, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you would draw near to people, Lord, and when they repent and put faith in Jesus, they will have that seed of joy in them, Lord. Yeah. They will know deeply that you love them, God, and you desire them to live guilt-free. Yeah. That they will know, Lord, that their victory is close, Lord, and that their hope is in you, God. And so I pray for anyone right now, Father, yeah. struggling with depression, and you'll just come upon them, Father, and fill them with your Holy Spirit. Yeah. And speak hope, and speak life, and speak joy, and speak peace to them, Lord. Mm. Let them know, Lord, that it does not have to be their Lord. That Christ, you can be the Lord. Mm. The Lord of their minds, the Lord of their bodies, the Lord of their lives. I will just commit that to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, Mark, thank you for that, mate. I really find it a blessing. I hope everybody else finds it a blessing. Um, we're going to be doing, hopefully, in the next five to ten minutes, uh, we're just going to make a cup of tea, and then we're going to come back, and we're just going to do a little introduction to the doctrine of hell, um, and then maybe later on in the evening I'll probably do something on Rudolf Bultmann. Uh, so 
stay around there's a few more things to go tonight uh, so I'll see you in about five to maybe ten minutes I uh, need a cup of tea and I'd, I just need to read uh, something uh, to so I can contribute to the discussion tonight on hell okay thanks Mark and thank you everybody for coming and see you in five see you in ten minutes alright take care now God bless